In theory, you could have 100 different outlets on a single circuit and you wouldn't be violating any hard and fast rules. Technically, there isn't a limit to the number of outlets you can have on a single circuit. And no, there isn't a code that's referenced in the NEC that puts boundaries around this practice either. Now, I'm not saying you could use all of those outlets at the same time, or even that putting in an unlimited number of outlets is a good idea, but if you were only going to use, like, say, one or two outlets on a circuit at a time, there would be no problem with this because you wouldn't exceed the load capacity of that circuit. If you tried to use all 100 outlets at the same time, though, or even half of them, or probably even a quarter of them, then you're going to overload the circuit very quickly because most likely that draw on that circuit is going to exceed the capacity of the wiring and of the breaker. This is part of the same reason why you should not have multiple surge strips or multiple power strips plugged into a single circuit because you're going to have a lot more outlets and a lot more load potentially put on that circuit and overload that circuit and going past its capacity. So every circuit in your home is designed to handle a specific amount of current measured in amps. This is controlled by your circuit breaker or really it's limited by your circuit breaker and the typical amperage rating for a single circuit in a house is either 15 or 20 amps. So a circuit breaker's job is to cut off the power if that circuit becomes overloaded and exceeds its rating. And this really has more to do with the wiring that's installed in the walls and how much current the wiring can handle without causing any kind of a hazard like starting a fire rather than how much the breaker is rated for. So the breaker is really just there to limit the amount of amperage going through the wiring so that way everything stays safe. And if you've ever purchased wire, you know there's different designations that come into play like 14-2 or 12-2. And that first number represents the gauge of the wire or how thick the wire is. And that correlates to how many amps that wire can carry. So example, a 14 gauge wire can carry a 15 amp load and a 12 gauge wire can carry a 20 amp load. And because of that, there is a rule that you should be aware of, which is called the 80% rule. The 80% rule states that you should plan on having only 80% of the capacity of that breaker being used at any given time to make sure everything stays within limits. So if you have a 20 amp breaker, then your limit to that breaker should be around 16 amps before you start to overload it. So really at the end of the day, what this comes down to is a set of best practices rather than hard and fast rules. And these can vary by the different areas and locations in your house where the wiring goes to. So typically for living spaces, you should be able to serve eight to 10 outlets on any given circuit comfortably. Kitchens can be a little bit different on the other hand because that area tends to serve a lot of high powered appliances. Right now the NEC states that you should have at least two 20 amp circuits just for serving the outlets around the countertop space for all those high powered appliances that can be used. And most likely you'll have other dedicated circuits in that kitchen as well, one for the dishwasher, for example. So with a kitchen, it's not a matter of how many outlets in a kitchen can be on a specific circuit, it's more of how many circuits should be in the kitchen. If you're looking for a general rule of thumb, a circuit should be able to serve eight to 10 outlets safely, and a 20 amp circuit should be able to serve 10 to 12. Now, this is gonna vary greatly again, especially if you have lighting that's powered off of that same circuit, that can greatly affect the amount of load that that entire circuit can carry, but that should give you a ballpark idea. Now, if you're curious about what the capacity is of a circuit for lighting specifically, I have this formula that you can use here. This is really going to be determining what the circuit capacity is in watts, and then dividing that by the wattage per light. This will give you the maximum number of lights that that circuit can handle. So for example, a 15 amp circuit using 120 volts would be 1800 watts. And if we factor in the 80% rule, then you should be able to have 1440 watts of lighting on that circuit. Now, these are the situations that can become really interesting because even though you can plan the maximum number of light fixtures on a circuit, there's no way to determine what type of light bulbs will be installed in those light fixtures and how much power that's going to draw. So for example, if you're using 60 watt bulbs on a 15 amp circuit, then in theory, you could add up to 24 bulbs on a fully dedicated 1440 watt circuit. But if you're planning on using LED bulbs that only draw 10 watts of power, then that number skyrockets all the way up to 144 fixtures, which is just an insane amount on a single circuit. If you base your calculations off of how many watts a typical incandescent bulb is inside of a house, which is 60 watts, then you should be totally fine. So if an incandescent bulb is used, then that circuit should be able to carry it. And if LED bulbs are used, then you're gonna have a lot more capacity, but you're also going to be playing it safe. To make it easier to understand how much load you could expect on a single circuit in each area of your house, I put together this slide that gives you some common scenarios that you can use as a reference. Now that we have these scenarios defined, we can take one of those, look at it, and see how it adds up to the capacity of a circuit. So let's take a bedroom, for example. So for a bedroom, if we're going to factor on 80% capacity for a 15 amp circuit, then that's going to leave us with 12 amps total to work with. 
So we have four LED bulbs in that bedroom. We plan on putting a TV in that bedroom and a computer then that total would be about 6.3 amps on average. Again, this is going to depend on what devices you have in that room, but 6.3 amps should be a rough ballpark of what we could expect that room to carry in terms of a load. And as you can see, that's well under the 12 amp maximum for the 80% rule, right? So in this scenario, we're well under the capacity limits for that specific circuit. I've also put together this information that will show you how many circuits you should expect to have in these specific locations, along with their amperage ratings. Feel free to pause the video here so you can take a screenshot or write this information down. And if you'd like me to make this as a resource that you can download, just let me know in the comments below. If I get enough comments, I'll go ahead and make this a document that I can share out. Hopefully you found this information helpful. If you did, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. Otherwise, be sure to check out this other video next. I'm sure you'll find it helpful too. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.